Hey everyone, this is John Dickinson from MotionWorks.net, back with a short substance painter tip for you. I've just started texturing this Beretta pistol, so nice to be in Substance Painter at last and adding the textures to this little baby. And I've got a little way to go, I haven't added any uh, dirt detail or wear and tear to this yet. I'm really only just doing the basic colours and roughness and height details. And I was just adding in the text here onto the slide. And I was having a look at the reference images and notice on my example, it's stamped in very cleanly. But if you have a look at something that's real, the text is stamped in, but there's a softness to it. And this would happen when this is stamped into the metal. You wouldn't get a perfectly clean line around all of the letters. So how can I create that look and feel in Substance Painter? Well, that's what I'm going to show you right now. Let's first of all just turn off what I have, and I'll just show you how I stamp that text into the slide. So I'll start by creating a new fill layer, and I'll just alt-click on height just to solo that property. Just bring my height value down a little bit, just some arbitrary value. And I also need to add a black mask the layer and also paint and here in the paint properties I can grab my stencil on the shelf and just drag that and drop that in and this is just something I created in Photoshop okay so now I'll just get the positioning correct I want this one here doesn't have to be perfect just for this example just increase the size of my brush and just paint that in. Okay. Turn that off for now. I'm just going to decrease my brush size, get out of the way. Okay, so I might now just look at this in 3D only. So there you go, I mean, it looks pretty good. These are fairly high res UVs. And I did that purposely so I could really zoom in close to this model. I use UDIMs in this particular case. But you can see it's beautifully clean. You haven't got that real sort of realistic stamped in feel. So one way you could do that is to duplicate this layer. I'm just going to control drag that underneath. And to this one, just click on paint, right click and choose add filter. And the filter I'm going to choose is blur. I use blur a lot in my work. And you can already see, as soon as I apply blur, it looks so much better. Have a look at the original again. My one is probably stamped in a little bit deeper. So if I come back to the original and just adjust the height, maybe something like that. And obviously this particular example here, there's, there, there's some dirt and um, there's some uh, grunge buildup on this text. I haven't got to that level yet. I'm not going to make it as old as this particular gun, but there would be you know, some kind of grime and dirt in these areas inside the text and some irregularities on the edges here probably where it's been scratched but wear and tear will come a bit later but just by duplicating that height fill layer and uh, and blurring the duplicate you get a much more realistic look and feel i just quickly moved on to this text here now this is the base look just stamping in the height detail and i applied the blur just like we did before but I also used another duplicate layer, and for this one I've used the Mask Outline Filter. Now the Mask Outline Filter is this one here. So if I go ahead and add filter, it's just down the bottom here, this one right here. And let me just delete that. And by applying that, I'm just going to select it, turn this off and turn this off. By applying that, it actually has blur built in. You can see here, there's a blur parameter. If I just make that zero, that's how it looks with the mask outline applied. So it gives you this, uh, this interesting outline effect. But then by blurring that slightly, you get a slightly different look. So if I just add the bottom one and I add this one, I think that looks even more effective. If I just take that one off and just adjust the blur. So 
So it gives a little bit more irregularity to it. And you also have this curve shape option as well. So rather than just applying blur by itself, using mask outline gives you a few more options. There's an outside and inside and both option as well. So you can even blur the inside, adding some irregularity to the inside of the text, which is quite interesting as well. I'm just going to make mine outside and just turn this one back on. And one other just minor adjustment is to add a tiny bit of blur to the main uh, height detail. So you can just see if I zoom in and see the difference here. I've just added blur. I'm just going to turn that on. Just softens those edges of that original one. Let me just turn these off. So that's what it looks like. But with a tiny bit of blur, just softens that up a little bit. So it pays just to spend a little bit of time customizing your height detail because I think that looks a lot better and it's going to look even better when I've added some wear and tear. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful for you. For now, this is John from MotionWorks.net. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tip.